Welcome to part four of this Silent Masterclass video tutorial. In this section, we are going to be covering the modulation envelopes inside of Silent. Now these are where you can take a good sound or where you can take even a bad sound to a good sound or a good sound to a great sound. Modulating in Silent is really important to make the sounds kind of mix ready and polished enough to go into a track or a production. So I have pulled up the, the sound that we've been using to discuss some of the parameters inside of Silent for the last few videos. And as you can see, I have some modulation envelopes set up already inside that sound. If I take these off, the sound is going to be a lot different. It's not gonna be a pluck anymore. It's going to just kind of be a dead super saw type sound. And it's just not gonna really have the punch or the modern, the modern feel and sound to it. So I'm gonna take those off right now. I had an instance, I only had three uh, things on it, but I'm gonna take all of them off and then play it. So you, you can hear right there the difference and the importance of using the modulation envelopes inside of Silent. I wanted to touch on what modulation is within synthesis. And if you're a absolute beginner, this will be really helpful. And if you're more of an intermediate user of synths or sound design, maybe the way I explain it will be helpful because I'm explaining it in a very layman's term. Modulation basically means change or to affect change. And inside of a synth, every synth will have usually modulation parameters. And when I started out, geez, a long time ago, um, I was confused as to why I wouldn't just change these settings on the proper section of the synth. What I mean by that is if I pull up the modulation options in Silent, you can see there's cut off A, cut off B. Well, I have that right here. I have cut off A and cut off B. We just we just discussed that in the last uh, video tutorial for this masterclass. But the fact that you're you're affecting the change via these envelopes the, your, with attack, decay, sustain, and release, it gives you a lot more control over your sound. And ultimately, anytime in sound design, when you have more control over your sound, the better you can make things sound. The modulation panel in Silent enables you to modulate a whole host of parameters and destinations. These are parameters and or destinations. Uh, some synths will call them parameters, some synths will call them destinations. I tend to call them a destination because I'm selecting a destination within the synth, within its layout typically, that's in a different different section of the synth. So it, it what it does is it allows you to affect change and to change different parameters or destinations in the in the synth using these low frequency oscillators and the ADSR, the attack, the decay, the sustain, and the release. So you have all these, you have two boxes for each envelope. You're, you're given modulation envelope one and modulation envelope two, and then you get two different destinations per modulation envelope. And in the next video, I'm gonna be discussing some just general tips and tricks that I use using these modulation envelopes and their destinations to kind of polish up some sounds. So for this video, I'm gonna run through what each and every one of them does and kind of how you, you get them to introduce effect and change and modulation into a sound. And then in the next video, I'm going to cover how I use those to make sounds better. All right, so first thing that we're going to look at here is this very first option that Silent gives you. It's called Volume A. And now I thought when I first started using Silent, I thought that, oh, it was attached to the mix A and B, and then I quickly realized there is a mix A and B option for your modulation envelopes. So what these volume A and volume B and volume A B actually are, what, what destination they're affecting, is actually the volume of your oscillator. For oscillators A1, A2, B1, and B2. So if, if I just pull this up, click on it like so in that green drop-down box, and then this knob by default will be set to 0, and I crank this up to 10, You'll notice there's no change to the sound. And so if I go to the exact inverse range of the value that we get, which is negative 10, again, no change. So what you have to do is you have to use, you have to turn up the sliders 
on either the attack, the decay, the sustain, or the release, or any combo of the four. I'm not going to be messing around with the attack too much in this tutorial, just because if I turn on the attack up too high, it's basically saying don't affect the modulation destination that I've pulled up until I reach that attack time, which would kind of be counterintuitive to showing you guys how to use these. So I will be messing around, obviously, with the decay, the sustain, and the release. So I'm going to boost all of those to about 5, 6, 7, anywhere in there. And now I need to turn the volume up on this little rotary knob. <laughs> So what that's doing is it's turning up the volume of both oscillator A1 and A2 simultaneously, and it's dependent on the decay value, the sustain, and the release that I have set up. So I can make it kind of pluckier and sharper, have a sharper attack and decay by just boosting the decay and leaving the sustain and the release down. So if I do that for volume B, it's of course going to... You can hear the noise which is what is only going on on my part B. I just have one oscillator B1 set up with one voice of, a, of, of kind of a white noise. And then your third option is this volume A and B. It's going to boost everything. So you can kind of hear right now, it's already, just with doing this, um, it's already a better sound than just having, if I turn this off. Just by playing around with these values kind of arbitrarily, even with something as simple as volume of your oscillators, you get a much more usable sound. It's not polished enough, in my opinion, to go into a production yet, but it's, it's getting there. So let me zero this out, because I accidentally just clicked on it. So now all of them are back to zero, and I'll zero that back out by double clicking on it. Now the next parameter you get is this pitch A and B, and A, B. So what this is gonna do is you can get some really crazy effects and some subtle effects. And in the next video where I'm covering some tips and tricks on how to use some of these modulation destinations, I will show you a really cool trick on how to get better kind of snap to your leads, plucks, and basses. But you can get really, really noticeable crazy effects with this. So if I just boost it a little bit. And you can see right there when I did it quickly from low to high. It's kind of almost like a DJ type scrub on vinyl. So you can get some cool effects going on with that and you can always modulate, I mean, you can, sorry, excuse me, you can always automate this in your DAW. You can always automate your modulation, which is kind of always fun and cool to do. So then you have the pitch of B, so this will be affecting. It's not gonna do a lot with the sound because it's just white noise. The pitch A and B will affect, obviously, both the pitch of A, part A, and part B together. So now I'm going to zero these back out, drag these down, double click on here. So the next option we get is this phase A. So we're still working in the oscillator destinations, and that's going to affect the phase. So this little knob right here attached to the phase, which is going to change things in degrees. And we covered this in the uh, second video where we, dis where we discussed the oscillators. I'm going to crank this up to 10 and start to boost the decay, the sustain, and the release. And it's not a super noticeable effect. Uh, you can use this to thicken things up, but I, I, that's why I was moving the knob slowly so you could kind of hear what it's doing. It's basically doing the exact same thing as if I did this. Very, very similar sound. So you, of course, have independent controls for both phase A and B, which would affect the, the uh, phasings for your B oscillators. And it would affect, obviously, it also gives you the option of phase A and B, as all these destinations do in silent. So let's go on to the next, which is kind of a fun one. It's the pan. So pan A is going to affect the pan of your oscillators, both A1 and A2 together. 
if I crank, let's turn this down, I crank this decay and sustain up a little. And you'll notice that it still leaves some of the sound centered and on the other side. It's not panning the whole signal. If you wanted to do that, you'd have to actually go up here. To really get a good swing in the pan, you, it's better to use the knob values up at the oscillator level. But that's a really cool thing that you can use uh, with pads, actually, and I'll touch a little bit of, on that in the next video. So pan A affects the, the panning of your oscillators, for your oscillator A1 and A2. Pan B is B1 and B2, uh, which is actually useful because you can kind of pan out, like if you're using it as I am, just adding some noise, you can kind of pan it out and spread it out. And then you have pan A and B, which would pan everything in all four of the oscillators. Now let's go to this next section called the filters, and this is really the meat and kind of the, the main reason why you'd really want to use these modulation envelopes are the filters. So if you remember the initial sound, it was quite cool. It was a kind of a pluck sound. And now it's just that sound. So I'm going to go to click on my menu and click to reset preset. It'll bring back the, the patch that I loaded before I made any edits. So there it is. And you can see I have cut off AB phase and pitch loaded up. So I'm going to take off phase and I'm going to take off the pitch for now and just show you the cutoff AB. And if I turn that off, that's the sound. So you'll start to notice when you start to do sound design in Silent that it's almost better to kill your filters a little bit so you can bring it back in with these modulation envelopes. And the cool thing is if I bring this back up, because it doesn't change or turn off any of the, per, any of the slider amounts or the knob values, it just brings it right back to what it was. But you can hear how that really makes the sound kind of more modern EDM type sound. And this specific instance is affecting the cutoff of both A and B, so it's also affecting this cutoff right here on this bandpass shape that I have for the noise generator. So let's just go to cut off A real quick. So that's kind of a much better, more of a usable sound as opposed to what we had if this is off. And that's again just, just messing with simply giving a, a boost in the, the decay, a little boost on the sustain or release, just to, and that's affecting just the cutoff. So it's not affecting my amp envelope or my oscillators. It's basically an envelope for your filter, which is just awesome. All right, and then you have cutoff B and cutoff AB, which as you'll notice this trend in silence will just affect the parameters for part B and then the cutoff filters for both A and B if you select A and B, which I typically select even if I'm not using anything in B, I just do it just to get in the habit of it because I have created four oscillator two part sounds in silence and then forgot to select part cutoff A and B and then I'm just affecting A or B. All right, so now let's go to this rezo. Reso A, that's tied to this resonance knob right here for part A. Um, and I have it down right now in the sound. So that is, as we touched on in the other video, it's doing a resonance sweep to uh, different frequencies inside of the uh, cutoff filter. So that's something that can be helpful to kind of get like acid type sounds. Or sounds that are really filtered and kind of notched out that would be good for, you know, pre-drop or anything like that. So now let's go to Reso B, which is going to affect the resonance of B. And for this specific sound, it wouldn't do a whole lot, even if I cranked up my resonance because it's just noise. And then we have resonance AB, which will, of course, affect both part B, part A and part B. 
All right, so now let's go to this this uh, miscellaneous section here inside of Silent. You'll see where it says miscellaneous, and it has some of these parameters. Now, some of these are, are make sense, and some of them are just kind of random, or, you, or they might seem like a random function, but they definitely have their place. So this first one is phaser frequency. And unlike all the other ones we've talked about so far, this is one of the only two in Silent modulation envelopes that you actually have to turn an effect on for. This is tied straight up to the phaser in the effects section. So if I turn up the decay, the sustain, the release, and crank this knob up, we're not going to get a single change in the sound. What we're going to have to do is turn on the phaser, and then I'll let that play. So that's what it sounds like just when you turn on the phaser and sound. So now if I turn this and move this around as it's playing, there's the effect on the sound. So that is, like I said, one of the only two modulation destinations inside of sound that you have to turn on an effect for. And uh, that one I typically don't use a whole lot. I'll use the distortion one more than that, and I'll touch on that in a second. So next you have this mix A, this mix B, and this mix A and B. This is tied to the mix A, B, and main volume knobs, on sliders on silent. You might be wondering why you'd ever, why in the world you'd ever want to modulate something so simple as just one slider. Well, the reason for that is also simple. You have control over the decay, the sustain, the release, and the tack, if you so wanted, of your mix A, your mix B, or both. That get, that's more control than just turning up or down that little slider there. And then next you have the LFO rate gain for both LFO1 and LFO2. I'm going to touch on those in two videos from now when I start to discuss the LFOs. And I'll double back and show you how you can use these modulation envelopes to kind of have more control over your LFOs. Now lastly is this distortion amount. And this is just like the phaser amount, phaser frequency. You have to not only turn up the sliders and this knob here to hear a sound, you also to hear an effect on the sound, you actually have to turn on the distortion module. So that's really useful because you can hear how crazy that distortion is just when I turn it on. Now it's really awesome that you can take down the sustain and the release of the distortion. So now there's not as much distortion on the sustain and the release as there is the decay. So that's really, really useful to sound design. That pretty much covers all of the destinations you have in the modulation envelopes in Silent. And it is just a duplicate. You get two of these. You get envelope one and envelope two. And all the parameters are the same for those. So in the next video, I'm going to go over how you can use some of these kind of in a tips and tricks style on how you can make some sounds better or stronger or more mix ready using some combinations of these destinations in the modulation envelopes. So thanks for watching and I'll see you there.